Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Sean. Welcome to day two of IBC. Crikey, already. Um, I'm going to be talking to you this morning a little bit about how to make it in short form video. I've been an editor for seven years. I have worked in all kinds of genres, formats. These are some of my clients. Um, I've worked in broadcast, I've worked in corporate. So I have a bit of a confession to make. I am a Premiere Pro user, but I also use other NLEs for my work too, because I'm a strong believer in using the best tool for the job, horses for courses, right? But for short form, I always really want to work in Premiere. You can get your work in really quickly, rendering is super minimal, and on these short turnarounds, time is really, really of the essence. But a lot of these features I figure you already know about. And there are some wonderful people along the back of the booth who can introduce you to some of the new features. What I'm here to talk to you about is some of the lessons that I've learned over the last seven years that really enable me uh, to do my best work. So let's take a look at what we mean by how to make it in short form. Short form videos, they're normally under 10 minutes, super tight turnaround, tight budgets. So you've got to work really, really quickly. And from an editor's perspective, the client needs the skills that you need. Uh, they, you, they have a lot in common. These are some of the types of videos that I've worked on. And you'll notice that a lot of them are types of marketing. They involve brands. So when you're working with brands, you have to be super, super specific about the story you're telling. You don't have a lot of time to deviate because you will lack clarity in your edit. How to make it? How to make it? That term makes me think that there might be a mythical place where when you arrive, you're showered with a constant flow of amazing work in all the best post houses. And while I would love that to be the case, I haven't visited there yet. So I would like to replace that with what I think we mean, which is to be successful. And even that is subjective to a point. What do you, how do you define success? I define success by being able to do my best work, doing work I really, really enjoy, with clients I really like, and looking forward to going to work each day. So, over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be talking about some of the lessons I've learned to enable me to do that. And I'm going to be covering your relationship with your clients, developing your operating skills, your toolbox, what do you take with you? Creative coping mechanisms, what do you do when you get stuck? And self-care. So, let's kick off with your client, the other person in the in the edit suite with you. And I should point out that when I talk about your client, it could be your producer, your director, your edit producer. I'm going to be using those terms interchangeably. And a great relationship with your client can really make or break your edit. So I would recommend, and I hope that everyone's doing this already, but to be as supportive to your client as you possibly can. Be as invested in their idea as they are. Try and get on board with them. They have to fight a lot to get their film, bring their film to fruition. And if you can make it clear that you're on their side, that can go a really, really long way. Always, always ask about time frame when you start your, your day. Discuss with your client what they want to achieve by end of play, because normally they want to get something out the door. You might have a client viewing, people might be arriving midday, because people from the office love to visit an edit suite at lunchtime, right? And as much as you can, guide your clients to actionable feedback. Not all of your clients exist in the video world. So they might have difficulty expressing what it is that they want. They might have difficulty identifying the problem they're experiencing. So as much as you can, guide them into feedback that you can action within your edit suite, what shots to move. And that will take maybe with some people quite a lot of discussion on what to do. Now some, what I would say, unuseful feedback can fall into one of two camps. The first is super, super vague. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get the same type of feedback, which is, can we make this edgier? Anyone have that? And we don't have an edgier button, right? So we, you need to determine a little bit with them what they mean by that. And also, I think if you've been editing a while, you probably know what they mean. They don't want to change the sync bytes. They probably want to change the aesthetic in some way. They want to grab people's attention. But you've got to make sure that you both know what you're going to do and what you're going to invest time in because you've got a very tight turnaround. The other camp is super, super specific. Move that shot here, move that shot two frames, move it three frames, move it one frame. Yeah, you've had that. 
Um, and that can be fine with super, super experienced producers. That's absolutely fine. They know what they want and that's cool. But with less experienced producers, sometimes they're bypassing you and not using your experience and they might not know the problem. They might not be able to express what is jarring them. So what I would recommend is try and make your edit suite a safe space. Encourage them to say whatever is on their mind. Make sure that they don't feel judged, they will not be ridiculed, and they are open to say whatever, whatever it is that they're feeling. Don't forget that an edit suite can be quite an intimidating, intimidating place for some people. It's full of equipment, they might not be able to read what you're doing on the screen, and that can cause a little bit of friction. Right? They might feel a bit anxious. So again, reassure them, reassure them that you are there for them, you are there to execute their vision. And I also would recommend, if you are sensing that they are frustrated, to talk out loud. Keep a running monologue going. Tell them that you're duplicating the sequence. The sequence that you worked on is saved. You've got that version, you're moving on. You're just going to fix up the music, so you're going to mute the video. Talk out loud, and then after a while, they'll be able to read what you're doing on the screen. That loss of control that directors experience can be very, very distressing. Don't, please don't forget that. Um, and if you can make that edit suite safe for them, they will love working with you. And finally, and I think the editors amongst us know that this is part of our job, be a diplomat. But not just that. Sometimes you'll be working with maybe five, six, or seven clients in your edit suite, and there's a lot of conversation going on. And that normally occurs when there is a production company who's been hired by a creative agency, who's been hired by a brand to get a video done in a very, very short time space, time frame, sorry, and the clients have all come in to get a very speedy sign off, right? So you've got a lot of voices in the edit suite, all talking over one another, and now your job takes on a very, very, very slightly a different aspect, which is to moderate. Moderate that discussion as much, as lightly as you can. Make sure people aren't talking over one another, perhaps. Um, be impartial and try everyone's ideas as much as you can. Give them all equal emphasis, because you are probably not aware of the politics going on in the room. Um, so be supportive of everyone. And that reminds me of another point. Sometimes, you know, my ego can get the better of me, and sometimes someone will suggest something, and I'll think, Pah, that's never going to work. And it's always that, when you give it your best shot, 95% of the time, you'll make it work. Because that's what you do. Like, you bring these ideas to fruition. Next up is developing your operating skills. Now, this is a little bit different from learning the software. In fact, it's not learning the software. You've already done that bit. That's the fun bit, sitting, doing all your tutorials. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd, so I love that. Um, this is about how best you use the software as an operator, working out how best it makes sense to you, how you are most efficient. And revising that process constantly, grow, you will grow as an editor. And the better your day will go. So, troubleshoot your own skills. Make sure that when you're operating, if something is frustrating you, that's a really good indicator that there's something in your operating skills that is perhaps you could improve on. So take a note, go back to it later, and there are loads of forums and Facebook groups where people will recommend to you um, and help you out trying to refine your process a little. The next one, and I feel pretty, pretty passionately about this, good organization. You can't buy it. It's great. When I pick up a, an, a project off another editor and it's been organized really well, it's wonderful. It saves me a lot of time. So please, 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 organize all your media, Get it in a good shape, because you, especially in short form, that project might be edited down the line two months by someone else, and they're going to pick it up. Um, so uh, it really makes life easier. Also, as part of a process, it's really important. There's a French culinary phrase called uh, mise en plus uh, that describes the way chefs bring all their ingredients together and all their tools, and they spend time doing this. They bring it all together so they can entirely focus on the job at hand. And that is exactly, I feel the same way about organizing my project. It really allows me to focus. I'd also say, make sure your media is organized. This should be, you know, I hope you're all doing this, but in case you're not, make sure it's super easy to find. You're gonna have to relink that media at some point, so make sure your media is organized. Also, with your sequences, have a great version labeling sequence system, sorry. Um, I have numbers and letters and codes and make sure it's really, really clear as to which version is which. And if any doubt, bundle all your old sequences in a folder and just leave the one that's the most current in the bin. 
also, if you're working in an agency, projects get switched around a lot, a lot. So uh, every couple of hours, you might be moved from project to project, depending on the demands of the day, which is always in flux. So if in that instance, create a custom column, write the editor's name, and then everyone will know who worked on the last version. And keep training. There is a wonderful series of Linda videos called the Premiere Pro Guru, which takes deep dives into multicam, into blending modes. It's a real treasure trove. Go take a look at it. Next, your toolbox. So those of us three freelance know that freelancing is a little bit like stepping into the unknown each time. So it's great to have a hard drive on you with all your tricks. Have it on you. And don't assume that you'll have internet ever. Never, ever, ever. Whenever I really need it, I never have it. So make sure you have everything on you that you possibly need. So I'm going to run through a list of things on my hard drive that I take around with me. And the first one is your user preferences or keyboard and workspace layouts. I know they can be quite quick to set up, but if you have them all with you, then you can pop them in. Your sound effects library, build up a sound effects library because you never know when you will need the ringtone of a 1950s telephone. I promise you, it will happen. Uh, same with music, have a build up a library of commercial and library music, especially good for sizzle reels, commercials, when the producer is trying to make music choices and you can suggest things. That's really, really great. Overlays, the good stuff, the lens flares, the light leaks, the bokeh, all that good stuff. Ramp and Design do, an ex do excellent collections in 2K, 4K, and 5K. I'd really recommend checking them out. DMGs, every time you download something, stash it. You don't want to be down downloading an OS update on the job. And collect test footage, because you're going to get a phone call late at night. Can you do a red job the next morning? Do you know that workflow? If you have it on you, then you can quickly test it out. And Evernote, OK, not on your hard drive, granted. Evernote is a digital notebook. Now, I have just about the worst memory recall in the universe. It's terrible. I can't remember anything. So I always keep notes of client information. So be that the address, names of people that work there, their email addresses, their phone extensions, passwords to servers, names of servers, where media is stored, the file. Uh, directory and how that works because everyone stores something very differently and you'll be told once and you don't want to have to ask them again. So keep all of that information in one place, some way that's easy and accessible. And also, take a good book with you because sometimes your client is going to have you sit there for five hours and you won't have anything to do and you won't know about it. So just take something to keep you occupied. Okay, creative coping mechanisms. Now, we're in a massive, massive building of all the tech stuff. And now, friends, we're going to talk about feelings. I know. Um, so there are three kind of common issues that I come across when I'm editing. And I'd like to share those with you because I found ways to negotiate these. And bear with me, because the first one doesn't sound like an obstacle. It, it sounds like something you say in an interview um, when someone asks you what your flaw is. It doesn't sound like an obstacle. And the first one is perfectionism. Now, that's different from doing your best. That is seeing your work in terms of perfect and failure. And that can become an obstacle. Noel Gallagher of Oasis said that when he, uh, if he had known how big Don't Look Back in Anger was going to be, if it was going to play at a wedding and funerals, he never would have finished it. And that can be, well, it's a good thing we have that song. It's a great song. Um, but the same thing can be applied to your work. Imagine you're sat at your computer, you've ingested all your footage, you've organized all your media, you've made all your selects, you've done everything you can possibly do to prepare, prepare for that edit, and now you're facing a blank timeline. And you have difficulty starting, because you can see it in your head, it's perfect in your head, but you want to put down every shot perfectly. But what if you don't? What if you break it? Because once you start putting down shots and it's not perfect from the beginning, it's a thing that's broken and need, needs fixing. So what do you do? You go make a sandwich, go on Facebook, send that email that really, really needs sending. So my solution for this is to get really good at starting things. Say to yourself that your first version is 50% of your best. It doesn't have to be your best work. Allow yourself to accept that element of failure into your work. Editing is a revision process. You don't have to get it perfect first time. But if you're procrastinating for an hour, you're just losing time. Okay, That's no good in a tight, a tight time frame. So do a first version, 
and then bung it in a bin, duplicate it, and keep on going. Just start, just get something down, get over that first hurdle, and you'll find when you start, things are gonna get better, you're gonna get rolling. The next one is decision fatigue. Your brain gets very, very tired when it makes decisions, and as you know, editing is making decision after decision after decision. So take a break. You'd be amazed at what a five, 10 minute break can do. A walk around the building, it makes all the difference. And sometimes when you're coming up against a problem that you just can't solve, taking a break and coming back to it five minutes later really, really, really helps. And false endings. I was listening to an interview with an SAS operative recently, and they were talking about the selection process and how they put this together. And they introduced false endings to introduce stress into the situation. So they send them out for a 5K run, tell them they're done, give them five minutes, send them on another 5K run. Tell them they're gonna wake up at 8 a.m., wake them up at 5 a.m. Keep things very unpredictable, and that adds a lot of stress into the situation. And this reminded me of my edit day. You never know that you're finished. You think you might be sending a version out and then you've got something else. You think you might be finishing at 6 p.m. and you might finish at 2 a.m. So while I don't exactly have a solution for this, I have a bit of a workaround, which is never, never to assume you're done until you're out the door. Don't mentally check out until you've left. Keep the brain going. So my last section is probably my favorite section because it's deeply personal and it's about you and how important you are. And it's self-care. And I really like this quote because it reminds me how powerful you can be when you are at your best. Self-care is also really crucial when it comes to maintaining your cre creativity and your mental health and your relationship with your clients. If you are run down and you've been run down over a long amount of time, it is really difficult to do your best and you are not gonna be that much fun to work with. So, my first tip is to look after your body as if it were your pet, okay? Take it for walks, water it, feed it, make sure it gets everything it needs. If you think about it as a, a kind of third person or puppy, if you will, it makes it a little bit easier to frame. Working conditions. Sometimes, sometimes you, are, you have some tricky working conditions, other times you have great working conditions. It can vary quite a bit depending on where you are. And sometimes that really is dependent on the project. Sometimes it's in the spirit of the project and that's fine, but sometimes it just isn't. And if you're in a situation where that's the case, please demand better. You deserve to be fed, you deserve to be watered, you need to take breaks, and you need to, within reason, leave at reasonable hours. Um, so please, take care of yourself and make yourself a priority. And it's worth mentioning again, take breaks. If you're superhuman and you don't need breaks, that's fine. Take a break anyway and normalize it for the rest of us mere mortals. And the last one, if our aim here to be successful is to be happy, then ask yourself what makes you happy. What clients do you like to work with? What work do you want? How do you spend your spare time? And go after that, push for that. So, I think I'm almost out of time. I hope you found that useful. Um, I can be reached uh, on Twitter and on Instagram there. I want to thank Adobe for giving me a very lovely stage to waffle on about some of the things that have been important to me. And thank you very much for being here. <laughs>